Hi, welcome to the Commercial Gas Engineer channel. This is a day in the life of a commercial gas engineer. First and foremost, I want to thank you guys who have subscribed. I want to big up a few of my subscribers, especially my number one subscriber, Jockster, Plum Light Tom. I want to big him up and his channel. Also the Mental Gas Man. In this scenario here, we have some pipes that need freezing. 15 mil pipes, so some radiative valves could go in. What would you do when you are carrying out freeze work on pipes? What's your procedure? This is what we did. Turn off the boilers first to get the temperature down. First thing in the morning, got the boilers off. Shut off the constant temperature pump. There was only one in this situation. And then shut off the variable temperature pump. And then also turn the power off to the pressurization unit. So here's the pressurization unit. Found it at 2.9. So I recorded what I found it on. This was the pump the vt pump pressure i found it on 3.38 bar that's what it was operating at this is the pump bit of a blurry picture but that, that is it and this is the boiler how i found it so it was working and i turned the power off and another boiler this is it with the power off that is a dead rat also got a picture of the temperatures that i had it at before turning off the system so here's one of the radiators they had an iso valve on the left already so that helped. This one didn't need freezing. So here's the freeze kit. Have you used this one before? And here's the bottle, the carbon dioxide bottle. This is one of the connections that's going to go on to the freeze kit. And this is connecting up to the freeze kit. Here it is on display. And here we have it again. So you've got two sides to it. One side here could be used if you're going to freeze both radiator valves. Here it is closer. Had a bit of a discharge from this side. So just put a bit of Loctite on it and that held it up and then also made sure that there was a gasket on this side because it didn't come with one but it looked as though a gasket could go in there. But nonetheless, despite all this tightening up gaskets and so on, it looked as though the gas had to escape from somewhere. So this is it connected on to the below the compression, the 15 mil compression fitting. Then you tighten up these two connections. Forgive me if I'm teaching you how to suck eggs if you've done this before, but not everyone has used every type of freeze kit. Oh, here we have it. So the, the CO2 had to go somewhere. There's a lot of it. So here's the valve that it was getting connected onto. There wasn't much beneath it. I didn't expect the clamp to be able to fit under there because I'm familiar with a thicker clamp to do this. But this type of REMS clamp managed to fit it. So this is where it was. It's the carbon dioxide liquid withdrawal cylinder. So let's have a look online how much they cost. I'm more familiar with using this Rothenberger kit. I've also used the sprays, but I do prefer, I've used the Rothenberger one and I've liked it because also I just like the quirky temperature sensors on it. But at the same time, you can just start to slowly open up the valve and see if water is coming out. That's a telltale sign, but you still are running on limited time. This is the other unit here. So I was having a look at the cost of some of them on eBay. So the Rothenberger one, I saw someone selling it for 830 buy it now. But for a bargain price, I saw this Rems Eskimo selling for £250 and in £15 postage and packaging. And apparently it's only been used once and it's in mint condition. So it looked quite good. If I was in the business of using these, I would buy this machine. It's got the instructions there, which I don't think had that much involved in there. It could have given more details. And the box I felt was quite cheap and plasticky. It wasn't metal. As for the bottles, I think that you can get them from like 25 to 40 pounds. You can get them, I think, refilled as well, probably for cheaper. I think this price here was for basically getting a bottle, like a, a three to four kilogram bottle. This one here is six kilograms. But I think you can get the yeah six kilogram bottle for about 25 pounds. I'm not sure if this was filling it up. Uh, regassing it or giving you just a complete new one i'm not sure about that but overall the price seems reasonable okay and also as it was a long weekend let me know what you got up to were you working were you on call i managed to take two of my kids to the cinema to watch mario of course i had to represent our fellow italian plumber and it was a good film it was really good and worth a watch if you've got children even if you haven't got children, why don't you go and see it? I think it was excellent, especially if you've played the old video games of Nintendo's Mario Brothers. It was really a laugh the way they put it all together. I think I enjoyed it more than the kids. Okay, and this site had a leak from a plate 
to plate. You may have seen me at this site before in previous videos. So guess what happened? Leaked again. There's three false draft burners here. For some reason, systems lost pressure. I don't know if it's a leak. I did hear there was a leak in radio upstairs that some of the other guys had to deal with. But nonetheless, this system looks like it lost pressure. Pressurization dropped below minimum of one bar to keep it happy. It looks like the boilers shut down and then temperatures dropped and then the plate to plates begun to leak. So this was the temperature when I walked in. No boiler on. Went to the pressurization unit. I pressed the plus and the minus together, then put the typical code in the 4706. Then I held down the set button, which gets one of the pumps going, forces it on. Then I held down the mute button and got the other pump on because I didn't want to really burn the pumps out because they're not really for that to be on for that long and so on. I didn't see any quick fill on the system and I just needed things sorted out quickly. So I held it down, got the system pressure up. But before I even done that, what I forgot to tell you is that I told the unit, I went through the settings and told the pressurization unit to be satisfied at 0.9 bar rather than one bar because I found it at 0.9. I told it be satisfied at 0.8 or something to that effect. So just so that the boilers wouldn't be held off. I mean, you could just link these out temporarily. You could put a link in it, tell the boilers from linking out the PU that all is well but no that, that seemed long to me so i just quickly put in the digits and boilers were happy or, sh or should i say one boiler came on this boiler here number one on the left so the electronic control box you know the sequencer it locked out at blue at the beginning of blue so it says no power braking control circuit air proving switch not in resting position so basically it looked as though the server motor wasn't opening up and letting air in and so the air pressure switch was sensing that no air was coming in hence the boiler wouldn't go through the firing sequence it just stopped in the beginning of the blue zone that's where it locked out at this particular site found that there was a isolation valve missing on this ecv so even though you can use this isolation valve before the regulator i found the isolation valve missing so what would you do in this scenario? It could still be isolated. You can get grips on it and isolate it. It wasn't like it was stiff and it couldn't be shut off. How would you categorize this? I gave it a category. But what would you, with your comments, just categorize it as? I'll let you know in the comments what I did. Okay, at this particular site, there seemed to be something strange going on with the boilers. Like there was no power coming in. I saw that one of these had tripped the MCBs on one of the boilers. So I didn't know if that had caused it. But before I could get to that, I went up into the panel and checked my phases. I checked from phase to phase. And on one of the phases, I think it was from here to here in the middle. So call it phase one and phase two in the middle. I got about 300 odd volts and I'm expecting 400 volts. So what I did is I got my neutral over here and then checked from neutral to live one. And I got nothing. But from neutral to live two, I got something. But then from neutral to live three, I also got my 200 odd volts so i came to the conclusion that phase one was down so i went looking for that what would you do in this scenario what would you do next if you realize you lost the phase would you have even gone inside the panel what would you do next let me know in the comments below what you would have done differently would you have called the electrician would you have looked to check the phases if there was sort of power on on the control panel but not everything was lit up here we have it so the power is on now how did we get the power on how do you think we got the power on so this is a look at the control panel any ideas i'll tell you in a moment so we got the lights back on they weren't so there's a control panel unit there and there's lighting and power so what i did is i looked at the panel isolator i turned off the power the main isolator and then i looked in here and i checked the fuses this is the main isolator and you see it power off then i checked for isolation then up here we are the phases phase one two and three incoming from the top it's the supply from the top load at the bottom and then this is the breaker that tripped so this was the fuse i checked i put it on resistance and the bleep test and i checked from up here and down here and the fuse was damaged. I scanned through my van looking for the fuse and I couldn't find any. I thought I had some in my tool bag. I did have some, but not this particular one. So it was a 
TIA, a Tango India Alpha 32A, and thankfully the electrical wholesalers had one. So I got more than one of these, two or three. So now what I did is I went to the boiler before turning that the power back onto it because there was a boiler now. What I did at the site, I took the a fuse out of the light. I found that there was a fuse in the lighting inside that lit the plant room and used one of those just to get the power in the building back up and running. So after doing that and then the next day sourcing and getting the fuse, this is the next day now I'm checking the resistance on the boilers because I don't want to just pop fuses for the sake of it. So I checked the resistance on the on a boiler that was working well in the plant room, turned the power off to it and then checked the resistance. And then the resistance on the units were very similar, 0.524 on one and 0.6 six one two on the other so i took it that there's a possibility that it was fine and it was fine the, the boiler may have just had a one-off trip and the breaker tripped at some point from something happening went back and monitored it and all was fine so this was the temperature at first 30 celsius boiler room flow but then it went up to about 60 until i could get the second boiler on that is Okay, thank you for watching. A big shout out to my subscribers around the world, especially those in the UK. I know most of you are in the UK, so thank you. Some of you in the US, some of you in Australia, wherever you are in the world, thank you for watching. I really appreciate you tuning in and supporting the channel. Okay, bye-bye-bye.